to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Catherine. I'm a year three NQT in the UK, although my NQT year is coming to an end. So I kind of wanted to come on and just do some videos about the process of being NQT and reflecting on all that. Um, and I kind of split it up into different parts because I know what I'm like and I know that if I just do one video, I will ramble and it will get really jumbled up. So today I want to kind of talk to you guys about the interview process and all that stuff for finding a new job. So I do have notes that I've made because if I don't, again, I'll ramble and I'll go off. So if I look down a lot, that is why I'm just keeping myself on track. Um, so the way that we did NQ, we, who's we? The way that I did interviews was, mm, I guess, pretty standard in that I went for loads of interviews. On my course, we had a very specific like lecture on interviews that kind of talked us through the process of what happens and job applications and what you have to do and that sort of stuff. We had a practice interview with one of the schools in the partnership because I went on a skit and I had different schools that we trained at. Um, and then basically, after we'd done that course and that lecture, we could apply for jobs. So I literally started applying for jobs in that lecture. I remember very clearly, I was sat in that lecture about job applications, filling out an application form. So I was pretty keen to find myself a job. Um, and I would love to say, and that's all she wrote, but no, there's more. So let's talk about my first interview. Okay, my first interview, this pen's gonna be a prop in this video, I'm sorry. My first interview was at a school that I had training at. So this school was training on sort of like teacher pedagogy, pedagogy, because they were like a really nice, I can't think of the words guys. They're like a really forward thinking school in that they used Maslow's hierarchy of needs and they used like a rating system for the kids. I can't remember what it's called because I pretty well known I'll try and link it if I eventually remember but like, the kids would come in and rate themselves one to five depending on how they're feeling emotionally and where they are out of their learning if like ready to learn or just not really there yet and like they'd respond based on those needs so like, if someone's a five they're fine but if someone's a one the teachers would do what they can to get them to a five and it was all pretty much child-centered and kids provision like across the years one thing I really remember and like I'm implementing in my school in my class this year is that they had different tables like you could either work by yourself with a partner in a group and the kids chose where they would go which I'm doing this year but um the more I heard about this school the more I loved it and I was just like yes I must work here so I applied I applied to work there I got the interview and then I don't know what happened. If you're not sure about job application forms, usually you have a personal statement, which I I pride myself on writing those things. I am actually a pretty decent writer and I'm eloquent as all heck in those. So that was a piece of beauty for me. But um, my interview wasn't as good as I could have been. It was my first one, so I don't really hold myself against it. But my teaching task that I did, I didn't plan it. I literally got stressed trying to plan it. So I went online, into the Roldar website, pulled off a lesson plan, printed off the worksheets and the resources, put those all together, Ooh, enough for the class, and then I taught it. In hindsight, not a great idea. Because it wasn't my lesson, I wasn't as well rehearsed on it. I didn't really know like what comes next or what I want it to look like or what it should look like at the end. I literally just followed whatever the paper had told me to do. Um, and I'm guessing that came through the interview because I did not get the job. Um, let's see, yeah. I don't remember the actual sit down interview. I have no recollection of what happened there. I know that I do interview pretty well because I talk quite, elo I don't want to say eloquently, but like in my situations, I kind of like, you know, rise to the occasion but um i do remember that i emailed for feedback and honestly i'm still waiting for it it is almost a year later and i'm still waiting for this feedback so you know who you are i'm still waiting 
but uh yeah that was interview number one it did not go well right interview number two was at a I won't say Church of England school purely because it had Saint in the title and in my experience any school with Saint in the title is a Church of England school or a church school. So, yeah I applied to this Church of England school um, and I will honestly say it's not like I wanted a Church of England school I was just applying for schools. I went to the school council website and any school that looked vaguely like I'd enjoy it I applied for it. So, I'm sorry, whatever this was, I'm still eating it. Okay. I literally just applied. So, I applied, again, boss-looking personal statement, got an interview, went for the interview. For me, this, interview press, yeah, this process was a bit weird because in my experience of interviews, and you know, all the two I probably had at this point, I was the only candidate there at the time. But this one, there's like a whole room of us. I don't know how you guys feel about interviews, but I don't want to see who I'm up against because then, you know, the brain starts talking and be like, well, she looks better than you and she's better and she's dressed better than you. You know, he's better than you. So I wasn't a fan of that, but we bonded, like, to the point where I currently still follow one of these girls on Instagram and we are constantly arranging to go for coffees and we keep forgetting to do it. And honestly, that's on me, but um, we bonded in that group. But anyway, on to the actual stuff. So my task this time, I learned from my first experience and I started planning my own lessons. So I planned a place value pirates activity, which was basically a treasure hunt based on our maths. So I had like a treasure chest that I got from Hobbycraft filled with like fake gems from Poundland. And they had to guess the code. We had to guess it by doing maths questions to find the place value. So it'd be things like, you know, the ones digit is bigger than five, or the ones digit is in between this and this. And they basically had to go through all the questions, work out the code, write down the code, give me the code, and then they would have opened the chest. Um, they did like the opening the chest part of it, but I don't think I like followed through the maths lesson before I did it. So it kind of, was either a bit trickier it was a bit tricky and it kind of went on a bit but you know they enjoyed it and again i totally see why i get my job the one thing that i was proud of myself for this one was that i prepped everything i had like six plastic wallets in case i had that many kids each wallet had a board pen had a rubber everything was laminated so that they could write on it and rub off I had like a scroll that I made on PowerPoint with like first, second, third, fourth digit. Once they worked it out, they could write it in. I had one person going to get the clue each time. I had like prepped this thing out. I just hadn't thought about how long it was going to take and the ability of the kids because it was like a tiny bit too hard for some and then too easy for others. And for some reason, all the kids who found it too easy were in one group and the other kids were in the other group and it was a bit like, mm, okay. But um, that was number two. Let's check my notes. Again, wasn't I wasn't giving feedback, but I did realise whilst being sat there waiting for my task and interview, that I didn't really want the job. Like the school just didn't feel like it was for me. It was a lovely school, but it just didn't, I didn't feel like I didn't see myself working there. Right, the last story for you. And this is my current job. So one thing I did kind of forget to say, and I'm going to keep this on the down low, but when I was looking for jobs, I wasn't really looking at anything other than location. I don't drive. I have been learning to drive for months, probably would have passed if COVID hadn't happened, but you know, it's meant to be, it's meant to be. So I pretty much knew that any school I was gonna to go to had to be accessible via public transport. I had to be able to get there on a bus, or worst case scenario, taxi, or best case scenario, walking distance. Because I've had terrible experiences with placements being far away. My whole university experience um, for my placements was 5am trains, 
to get to the school at 7am where I'd be the first member of staff in and have nothing to do because I'm training I don't know what I'm there, I don't know what I'm doing. So I was adamant that that would never happen to me again. I never again want to see what the 4am sky looks like. It's not right. So yeah, location was key. So that brings me to the tale of how I got my current job. The school I'm working at, as you probably know because I've said it a thousand times, is down the road. I can walk there. I can walk there now if I really wanted to. I don't, but I could. So when I saw the advert on the um, council website, I was just like, ha ha, down the road, yes. So I booked to go for a visit day. Um, I went down there, plenty of time to spare because down the road. I'm pretty sure I actually left school early, my placement school, came home, dropped off some stuff, just to be a bit cocky, changed, and then went for my visit day because I was that close and I was like, I can. But I went for the visit day, had a tour around with the head teacher, he was lovely. He let me know that the job would be in year three and I was training in foundation. So I was a bit like, yeah, it's fine. Um, I've been everywhere, I'm good. Um, and I literally fell in love with the school, just being there. The area that I live in and near that school's in is a deprived area and it has got a bit of a bad rep. Um, like even just moving here, my friends were just like, bye, and I'm like, calm down guys, I'm not gonna die. So um, seeing what he was doing for the school and trying to change reputation and let the kids know just because you're from here, you live here, doesn't mean anything about you, was for me was like, yes, that's what everyone needs to know. Like, it's not bad, please calm down. So from there, I was like all in. And then he told me about his plans for like interest in technology and I was just like, and then he told me about introducing, introducing the maths and maths stuff that we're doing. I was just like, please. I mean, now that I'm teaching it, why? But at the time, yes. So I, yeah, I applied. I applied real quick. I sent an application off. I worked my magic on a personal statement and I got an interview. Now, this was possibly one of the best interviews I've ever had, purely because had to make a powerpoint for it i was just like yes so as well as the formal interview the sit down interview the lesson station i had to make a powerpoint i don't even remember what it's about i really don't if i could try and find it out i will but to make a powerpoint about i think it was what i would do in my classroom and stuff like that so i put in about how to have a brain break area because sometimes children need to you know relax a bit I put things about behaviour management, I put something about SEA, I think, I can't remember 100% what I put in there, but apparently it was good, so I got the job. Um, and then we have a sit down interview. This was with the, um, one of the trustees, because we're a trust school, academy school, and the head teacher. My observation, lesson observation was by the deputy head, um, who was now a mentor, shout out. Um, and it was great. My lesson, again, I took the time to actually plan this. I didn't get anything from the internet. I bought a book to do the interview on because I it was something that actually resonated with me. I actually did it on reputation. I used the book The Bad Seed and I read the book to the kids and then we spoke about reputation. We spoke about reputation and how it doesn't impact you like how other people see you doesn't affect how you are i gave all the kids a seed they wrote down what they thought about themselves on the seed they went round each other's seeds and wrote what they thought about them on the seed i'd um then we shared about how like before you turn your seed over remember how reputation how other people see you doesn't necessarily mean that's what you are they turned them over they looked at them they wrote something about how they're going to get from who they see themselves and how others see them, to who they want to be. They wrote compliment seeds for each other. They still have them in the classroom, which is now my classroom, so they are still in that classroom. Um, and honestly, like, it was a great lesson. I loved it. It was fantastic. Um, and the deputy head thought so too, because she wrote me a little note that I'm going to grab because it's still on my board. Yeah, this is my seed. From the deputy head, it's probably backwards to you guys, but my lesson was fab, but I'd be an amazing teacher. Thanks. 
so yeah that's how that interview went I came home um, and got the phone call that I got the job I think I got it like a few days later actually I remember I was in the kitchen my mum just having a chat when I got the call um, I'm on the phone talking to the teacher acting very calm and oh thank you very much da, 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 da. whereas what he can't see is that I am literally doing high kicks all around the kitchen and my mum is silently screaming it was great but let's move on to the tips that come from the whole experience this is something I've had to think like really long and hard about because I'm actually not good at giving advice because I don't remember anything and so I can't be like oh well when I did this because I don't remember but I will say I have got I don't know three I was four three tips for you guys maybe more if I remember something but tip number one is to I've forgotten already good thing I wrote it down know what you want I think my biggest mistake with my interviews was that I didn't know what I wanted and looking for a job I didn't know what I wanted other than I wanted to be nearby I'm lucky that I found the school I'm at because I honestly love this school I can't imagine I'm gonna leave ever I've told my class until you're in year six I won't consider leaving but even then I'll probably still be there and I wish that I had known what I wanted earlier to sort of look for it rather than expending the energy and going through the rejection because I didn't know what I wanted I mean I guess it softened it a bit because I didn't really want the jobs but had I not got this one that would have hurt so I also know what you want whether it's a church school with you which you want to be in any kind of ideals that you have any sort of philosophies that you have for example um behavior management is quite a big thing and anything that is really like visual and stand out and like moving from you know, i don't want to say clip chart but moving down the clip chart i'm no i've since learned that i'm not about that so yeah know what you want because that will really help you with your search tip number two then i want to look again is oh a fourth girl research once you know what school you've applied for in fact even before you apply for it research the school i spent a lot of time on the school's websites i looked through behavior policies i looked at past work some schools have got like class pages for their for the classes i looked through that see what kind of work they did all that kind of stuff will help you to see firstly if you can actually envision working there if you go through class pages and it's pure blocks of writing you're probably not going to want to work there whereas if you go there and it's kids doing interactive things it's projects it's actual arts and craft stuff you might think yeah i could do this so research 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 it also helps with your applications because if they have a clear love of technology on the website you can slide that into your application and just say hey you know when i trained i did this this and this or i look forward to doing this in my classroom all that stuff my favorite lines to use in every application was if employed in your school i will i love it because it just it shows that you're thinking about what you're going to do when you work there it shows that you're positive because not just counting yourself out straight away and it also kind of like in their head you're already in there once they read if employed i will they're already thinking oh she can do that for us or he can do it for us so that is my favorite line to use I may have gone topic there, but research is the main topic. Okay, tip number three, visit your school. And this isn't a blanket, everyone must visit their school. This is just a, if you can visit the school. Like I said, with that second interview that I had, had I not gone to the school, I wouldn't have known, actually no, that's a lie, sorry, all the way around. If I had gone to the school, I would have known I didn't want to work here. It was something about the atmosphere, something about the children, just looking around. I was like, smile, smile. So I knew from there that I wasn't gonna enjoy it there because the kids weren't enjoying it there. So I would say where you can visit the school. Most schools have visit days. And if they don't, it's kind of sketchy because you start to wonder why. Um, I did visit one school that had their visit day on a Saturday 
which for me was strange because when I go to visit a school I want to see the kids there because then I can see how things work, I can see you know literally how things work, how they're taught, how they learn, how break times operate, how the teachers act, how I would get on with members of the staff but it was it was literally just me, the other interviewees, the edge teacher, that was it. So definitely visit schools, you get to see what everything's like, you get to see how things run, you get to imagine yourself there, if you're lucky you get to see a classroom, I mean you will because you'll be teaching them on for your task and you can see what kind of displays they have, it really helps. I was super lucky in that the class I interviewed in is the class I now have so anytime I sort of thought about what I wanted in the class I could see it in that room and it is now currently in that space where I saw it because I was lucky. But yeah, just, just visit guys. My tips are going to be all over the place because I just, I ramble, but you know, visit. Okay, I don't know what that was, but it was kind of cool, I liked it. Tip number four, prepare. Just, just be ready. I am someone who over prepares to the point where I think if you go on my Instagram, I've got a story about my interviews and getting ready for those. And I literally have a tip on interviews that is like, bring pens, bring paper, bring extra pens in case your original pens die, bring pencils, bring sharpener in case that pencils break, bring a rubber in case I haven't got one, bring whiteboard pens, bring board rubbers, bring everything. I literally packed everything for, I think it was that interview, my first one with the Roald Dahl exercise. I brought everything. I brought paper, I brought spare paper, I brought card in case I needed it. I think I brought lined paper. I brought my laptop and a remote to control the laptop. I brought everything. I think I actually turned up to an interview with an A3 portfolio and I could see everyone like, what is in there? But I was like, all my stuff, I'm ready. So literally be prepared. In terms of the interviews, I really wish I could be more help here by honest to life. Cannot remember a single question I was asked at all. Bearing in mind this was like a year ago and my memory is not great at the best. I can't remember a single question, um, but I will say there's loads online you can research frequently asked questions you can research like top 10 questions asked in a teaching interview or primary teaching interview and it will cover something then you can think about your answers i know that ones that i was quite iffy on were questions about sen just because at the time i wasn't confident about it um questions about payment management again at the time no confidence in that i thought i was gonna be terrible at it um, but yeah, research, have a look. So yeah, prepare yourself for the task, bring the resources that you're gonna need. Easier to bring them and know that's there than expect them to provide it and then they haven't got one. Prepare for the interview, Google questions and think of answers. Um, I will say have a look at Happy Miss H's Happy with Miss H's video on interviews because she actually had index cards that she wrote her answer down on and they let her take them in, which I had a thought about, that was really good. Well done. Um, but yeah, that's something that's a good thing to watch. Um, and what should you be preparing? I don't know. That's it, I think, just those two things. Um, oh, that's a good one, ask for feedback, told you. Number five, ask for feedback, even if it's bad, it will help you. Like I don't, like I said, I don't remember a thing about my interviews, but I will say any feedback I got, I probably would have acted on it. Even feedback, like self-critical feedback in that I didn't prepare that first lesson, I then thought, okay, next lessons, I need to prepare for those. So I did and they really helped. I'm starting to ramble. So I think I'm gonna end this video here. Yeah, I am, it's coming, I can feel it. Right. I hope that this has helped some prospective NQTs out there, even if you're just looking at training in education or you think you want to be a teacher, I hope this helped. Um, subscribe to my channel. My next video, I've made like a full little fan guys, I'm so proud of myself. My next video is going to be about 
my anxiety experience and tips on surviving it. So if you want to see that, subscribe and click the little bell so you're notified when that comes up. Lord knows I am not the most organised YouTuber, as I am a teacher. Lord knows I'm not the most consistent YouTuber, and I apologise for that. But I do really want to do this, these videos, so that will be coming up. Subscribe and notification bell to find it, and hopefully that'll be up soon. Um, I feel like there's more I should be saying in these outros every time. Follow me on Instagram, like this video. Okay, that's it. See you guys in the next one.